Hi everyone, it's Agnes, and today I'm really excited because I've got Jay Williams. He's from the UK. Welcome, Jay. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? It's very early for Jay, and he's not fully hatched, I don't think. <laughs> No, it's okay. I've been up, I've been meditating, I've done my gratitude, I'm uh, raring to go. And you've even had a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, I saw when I first got on here with you. So I'm really I am life. I am life. I'm really happy to see you because you indirectly, you don't know, but you help me a lot with my YouTube channel and you also have really meaningful work personally. So I wanted to get you on today because I know a lot of people hate their jobs. A lot of people don't know what to do. A lot of people are half creative, half intellectual. You know, they don't know which direction to go in. And I think getting people on like you, who is floating freelance and doing your own thing is, you know, it's good to hear from people like that. And you today being the one we are going to hear from. So can you share a bit of your story about, like, did you even have a job at some point? Did you transit or how did it start for you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, um, a lot of people don't know this, but I used to serve in the Royal Air Force. I was in the military for nine years <laughs> and I did have a job, yes. Uh, <laughs> and the first thing people always ask me, by the way, is, were you a pilot? I'm like, as much as I want to say yes, um, I probably would have never left that career if I was a pilot. Uh, I actually worked in IT and telecommunications. Okay. And by the way, that is far less glamorous than being a pilot. People go, oh, that sounds very intelligent. I'd like <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, so I actually, um, yeah, I served in the Air Force for nine years. And um, the way I probably describe myself is... Um, not really military. Um, I joined the military mainly because I wanted to travel the world and uh, meet new people and, uh, and have a career and a structure and a, a nice pension as they sold it to me, all of this amazing stuff. And uh, what I actually found myself doing a lot of the time is trying to spend more time trying to get out of work than actually be in work. Yes. So they had this amazing thing uh, in the military called adventure training. And uh, you used to be able to sign up and go and spend so many weeks a year doing anything you can possibly imagine that involved the outdoors because it promoted leadership, it promoted teamwork, it promoted personal growth. And I found myself, I think it was two weeks a year you were entitled to, maybe one week. And I often found myself doing probably 10, <laughs> 12 weeks a year of this kind of stuff, everything from. Uh, skiing, uh, Nordic skiing, cross-country skiing, downhill skiing, scuba diving, playing football, playing golf, <laughs> uh, rock climbing, mountain climbing, anything you can possibly imagine to just get out of work. Yeah. And at the time, I really didn't realize um, the reason why I was so committed to getting out of work. And it wasn't until probably around six or seven years into my military career, I was actually DJing a lot on the side. And I found myself working my day job and kind of thinking, oh, this is pretty, pretty dull, pretty boring. I don't feel fulfilled in this. And I found myself going home at night and practicing on my DJ decks for like three, four, five hours. And neighbors would be knocking on the door saying, turn the music down. And I'd be like, turn it up. <laughs> a little bit more really annoying as a neighbor like that. Um, and uh, I found myself um, playing out in front of people and just feeling so alive and it's so fulfilled, so happy. And I just loved that when I played music, one of the things I really liked is that in that moment, I could make a big difference in people's lives. And it doesn't matter what was going on in their lives, uh, whether they had things going on at work, they hated their job, they thought their boss was an ass, um, or, you know, things weren't great for them. In that moment, with the push of a button, I could change their world and change their state and put them in a place where they literally were loving life. The alcohol probably helped, by the way. Um, and I started asking questions of myself of, 
wow, like I'm doing this thing in the day and I'm doing this incredible thing in an evening and a weekend. What if there was something better out there for me? What if I could have this feeling of fulfillment and freedom and just joy in my life all of the time? And so I started asking myself these questions and I started okay. pushing down. Can I interrupt you? How old were you yeah, when that sure. was going on? Sorry? When you started asking yourself those questions, how old were you? Um, so I was 25. Oh, wow. So really young. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I started going down this route and asking myself these questions. And um, I pushed on with the music side of things, continued to DJ on the side and just loved music. I loved life when I was uh, playing music. And... Uh, the military actually gave me a promotion. Uh, they offered me a full 22 year career, pension, <laughs> or everything that went with that. And it was off the back of a trip to Ibiza, another one, I went there four times in total. I just kind of thought to myself, like, no, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of pretending to, that this is who I am, like I'm military. It's not who I am, it's not what I want in life. And so when my boss um, gave me my paperwork, I just said, no, I'm not interested. I don't want that, this is not what I want. Yeah. And uh, they turned around to me and said, you know, the grass isn't always green, you're on the other side. And um, I wish I could go back and speak to that boss right now, I really do. Um, I find myself in a place right now I've got a long story, by the way, we could talk all day, um, where um, I decided to quit uh, my career in the military. Uh, I had really good intentions of moving to Ibiza for the summer and going in DJing, um, but then I met a girl, uh -huh. uh, my girlfriend, my beautiful girlfriend, Vicky, um, who literally rocked my world, <laughs> to put it randomly. I had this dream, I was yeah. going to Ibiza, I was set, and then she shows up. But I can honestly say that's the best thing that ever happened to me because what I actually found was, I'll go into the relationship a little bit, it'll add to the context of the story. Um, I'd been in relationships all my life where I was pretending to be someone I wasn't. And the first relationship, I was quite young, 18, I was in that relationship for four or five years. Um, and in the UK, they say massively under the thumb. Are you familiar with that, Agnes? Yeah. You know, uh, you do this, you do that. Yeah, okay, no problem. I'm not ashamed to admit that. It's, you know, part of my journey and part of um, who I am. I was massively under the thumb. And I came out of that relationship. I left that relationship. And um, what we typically do is... When we're one way in one relationship, we get into the next one, which way do we go? Whoosh, like over to the other way. Yes. So in the next relationship, I got my, I found myself being really difficult. Um, you won't tell me what to do. I'm a free spirit. I'm my own man. You know, no one can control me. That kind of guy. Um, not something I was proud of, I'll be honest with you. Mm. But again, it was just all a learning experience for me. And... Um, that relationship came to an end and I kind of took some time to reflect and thought to myself, you know what, I've been in relationships where I'm not really who I am. Like I've got a big heart. I like to have fun. Uh, I'm a big outgoing guy who likes to flirt and, you know, have a joke. It's just part of my personality. And I want to meet a woman who can embrace that and embrace who I am. And, you know, if she's cool with that, then I'm cool with her. And, um, and that's when I met my girlfriend, Vicky. Uh, and um, she is like a female version of me, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, she definitely challenges me, which is great. And so that's, uh, I met her. And um, during the same period, I got um, introduced to a couple of guys who were also communicating this message of, you know, you can be fulfilled in life. You can be happy. You can have everything you want. Uh, and it's only really you that stands between where you are now and where you want to be. And really resonated with this message and got into a, an incredible community. And that's how we met yeah. and, and started learning about selling products, marketing, business. I'd never run a business in my life. I didn't know what a lead was. And if you're like, what's a lead? Google it. 
<laughs> just a, an email address. Um, I didn't have a clue about business, so naive. Um, but I just loved what these guys were doing and they were making a difference in the world. And that was something I really connected with and um, went down this route. And over the last four years, I've really been testing a lot of different things to find what really lights me up inside, which has me passionate, which has me excited to work with people and really fills my heart. Um, where I feel like I'm making a difference in the world because yeah. I remember when I was um, I was about six years old I used to watch Animal Planet all the time uh, every single day I'd watch every all day National Geographic Animal Planet and my parents always knew um, who'd been watching the television by what channel it was on I think it was yeah. 525 or 528 in those days and um, I used to see animals getting slaughtered in Africa, uh, poachers and, and cutting down rainforests and baby orangutans and mothers had been killed to farmland. And, and this used to find myself just in tears, like literally bawling my eyes out, just thinking, this is, this is terrible. Yeah. And I always thought to myself, one day you're going to do something good in the world that does make a difference. And I've always believed I've had this bigger call into something greater than myself. And the last four years has basically been my playground to start experiment with, experimenting with that and finding out what really lights me up, what really makes me happy. So I can leave this planet a better place than where I actually arrive, which is ultimately um, my big goal for myself and my life. Long story. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Well, it's like all these parts, like business, money, meaningful work, relationships. It, they're not all separate. Like they do really interweave into the deeper parts of us. And it's bringing all those things together because it's like what you were saying, you know, here I was going into the military, doing all this stuff, and then they offer me this amazing thing. But I'm like, whoa, that is so not me and where I want to go. So I hear the story of the reverse. People get offered that and they go, that's such a great idea. That's such a great deal. You know, oh, I don't know if I want it, but I'll take it because it's really, it really is a good deal. They don't look at whether it's a good deal for me or it's the right thing for me. So the fact that you took a left turn, even though that shiny object was being waved at you, you still went, you know what? No. I think yeah, that's I've, I've, I've also found a lot that, you know, people always say this, um, you know, you can be wealthy and you won't be happy and money won't let you buy your happiness. And in my experience, um, money has the value that you put on it. But essentially, um, I love money, by the way. I love money. Money is great. It gives you options, gives you choices. Um, but for me, I found that it's not what drives me and it's not what really motivates me. What motivates me is um, feeling great about myself, feeling fulfilled. And uh, money is just a byproduct of the value I offer and feeling that way. Um, one thing um, my mentor, and I know one of your mentors as well, uh, said that people are attracted to people who are happy. Yep. <laughs> That's so true. Um, Stuart Ross, it, 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 and it's so true. You know, we talk about law of attraction. Yeah. People are attracted, you know, when you meet those people who just have amazing energy and you're just like, I just want to be around you all the time because yeah. they wear off on you. And, and that's attractive. It's sexy to a lot of people. Yeah. And yeah. it's so true. And so, if there's anything that I could share that would. Um, help your audience in this is that money is important it gives you choices definitely for sure but look at your own life and look at areas in which you can be happy right now um, because that level of happiness so what can you be grateful for because you'll attract great things into your life when you start to vibrate on that level and um, I've seen it so much in my life I really have and 
I, I don't believe in coincidences now. I really don't. I just believe that everything that I'm attracting is something I'm manifesting mm. into my life. The people, like my girlfriend, Vicky, when I said uh, that, you know what, I'm just going to be me. And if I find someone, cool. And guess what I attracted? Yeah. That exact person. And that is no coincidence. That, and, you know, we've been together five years now. We've traveled the world for the last two years. Just... And we had like two arguments. We lived in a camper van in Australia for <laughs> several months. That's a real test, by the way. Yeah. And um, yeah, the law of attraction, it's just incredible. And that all came out of just being you. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, pushing that out to the world. It's your gift because there's no one else like you on the planet like it. Yeah. That's so great to hear someone that loves what they do and they have a great relationship, you know, because it really, those, both of those areas can fall into place and you can have both things working extremely well. And, and I think I've noticed in my coaching, a lot of people that are in debt and have trouble with work are often having relationship struggles or, you know, they're not in one and they want one or whatever. So they seem to dovetail together because the common thing is you and your lack of self-love or your lack of self-worth or your, I need to get that from someone else. I need to get that from money. I need to get that from, you know, an addiction because addictions often play a role. My self-love's not good. So I'm going to get something from the outside because I don't feel good on the inside. But it's like, if you keep following what makes you happy all the time, all those unnecessary things fall away and you really then do attract much better people to work with, much better working conditions, much better relationships where you don't argue all the time and all that stuff. It, it does permeate everything that you touch energetically, vibrationally, as you said before. Have you got like, um, Jay, a daily routine that you follow like for getting yourself in the right state? Yeah, so um, one thing, um, so the first thing I do is I, I, when I get up in the morning, one of the things I have to work really hard on, by the way, is not looking at my phone first in the morning. Yeah. So, um, you know, because social media just drains your energy. Um, before you know it, you've lost half an hour, and that's my most productive time in the morning. So yeah. what I tend to do is when I wake up, I will normally have two pints of water. I will yeah. avoid looking at my phone. I'll make myself um, dynamite tea, as uh, Tim Ferriss calls it. Normal cup of tea, yeah. British tea, a Yorkshire tea, if you're from the UK. Um, and I have my cup of tea, and um, then I sit down and I do 25 minutes of uh, meditation. Yeah. And then I do visualization, so sort of five to 10 minutes visualization of my goals. Yeah. And really feel it. Um, one of the things I actually found in that with visualization is I used to go, you know what, I want to make 50,000 pounds a month. I'm just throwing a number out there. Uh, 50 grand a month. And the first time I did it, I was like, woo, yeah, like I'm feeling this. It's amazing. Like 50 grand a month. It's like, cool. Um, but after like, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, I found that I got bored of that visualization. Uh, and it wasn't until I started tying it into what that would actually do for other people uh, in my life yeah. that it started to change. And so I was able to really emotional connect, emotionally connect with my vision and my yeah. goal for what I wanted to create. And um, honestly, every day I found myself in tears, just yeah. pouring. Yeah, it's just yeah. so I'm feeling that experience like it's already happened. And um, so yeah. I do a visualization. Um, and then what I do is I have a, 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 some, uh, some porridge and some uh, fresh fruit and some cinnamon to go with that to spice it up a little bit. <laughs> and then I sit down and I, um, yeah. I take my book and I, I journal. So um, I... Uh, the way in which I journal is I write three things I'm grateful for. Um, so that will be something that happened recently. That will be an opportunity that I have today. And that will be something really small, like the water that I have in this glass. I'm grateful for the water. Yeah. But I'm able to drink clean water. And the reason I do that is so that 
I don't need big things in my life all the time to be grateful for. Like, yeah. You know, small things I'm grateful for. The blue sky, the sunlight, the sunrise this morning. Yeah. And um, following that, I actually... Um, what do I do then? I, I, I named, so I named three things that would make today great. That's the yeah. next thing that I do. Okay. So I'll um, really push my uh, imagination and just go wild and, and try and manifest that. And if it happens, it happens. Great. If it doesn't, hey. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing I do is I, I write down at least three affirmations. Yeah. Three affirmations on, um, you know, what I'm attracting. So I always end up adding an ing to the end i'm developing i'm attracting i'm manifesting there's a reason we use these words by the way yeah. and um, with all of those affirmations when i say them i say um i'm attracting x this or something better all yeah. of the time so yeah. that's the way i always write my um affirmations out and then at the end of the day to so i have my day I obviously have an incredible day not every day by the way i do have rubbish days yeah. um, I always reflect. I always reflect on our day and I write down three things that made today great and then three things that would have made today even greater. Yes. So that, you know, just that reflective time uh, at the end of the day. So that's how I start my day and that's how I finish my day as well. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's a good routine. Yeah, it is. I've, um, I've, I've just, um, so I've been, um, so I started, meditating five days a week when I got back from traveling yeah and um, I meditated while I was away uh, of course as well but essentially I started doing it more often when I got home five days a week and I've just hit I think 42 days straight of meditation because I thought I'm just gonna do this every day because it feels great like it yeah. really does and the way I always describe it to people is stress is something that doesn't just happen like you get stress when someone pulls out in front of you in the car, for example, what's instant stress. Yeah. Um, but stress through your work and through your day kind of builds up gradually. Yep. And the way I describe it is typically if you start at zero and then over the course of the day, you're just going about your normal day life, you might reach a five by the end of the day. And you reach a five by the end of the day and then you go to bed at night. And if you don't do anything about it in that period, you normally wake up at a four or a five. Mm. So you haven't, you haven't dealt with that stress that you've accumulated over the day. Now, if I reset again at the start of the day with a meditation, I take it from a four or five down to a zero again, yeah. and then up to a five and then down to a four. And it's just this constant cycle. Whereas yeah. if I don't meditate, and I see this in my life in the past when I haven't meditated, I go to a five, I wake up as a four or five. On day two, I might raise to an eight. Yeah. And then day three, I have an argument with my girlfriend or yeah. I snap at someone or, you know, I have a bad day. And so I use this as a way to manage my levels of stress. Yeah. Because anyone who's even in a job, in business, in life, life is stressful. And these things all add up. And if you don't take care of yourself, mm. then you can't um, take care of others and be loving and and giving to yeah. um, the other people in your life. I agree. It's such a, um, it is such a wonderful thing because just doing the breathing alone, it, it releases that pressure valve. So yeah, I think it's one of the best parts of my day. I often in the middle of the day, cause I often, because of the time zones and coaching at different times, I coach in the morning and then I might have three or four hours off in the middle of the day from face to face. So I'll go and lay on my bed, put the headphones in. I've got, you know, a, a, a meditation app or, you know, I listen to, you know, Wayne Dyer or Louise Hay or something. I just pick something and then I use that middle of the day. And it's like, as soon as I get up an hour later, it's like, I feel like I'm starting a fresh new day. Like I feel like that second half of the day feels as good as the first half because I've mm. literally reset and also when you're at a computer all day as you know <laughs> wow you start to get a bit pretzel shaped and when you go to lay down you go wow i didn't realize how tightened up my body was until i laid down so i find just that making that time during the day is a really but i i literally have to set the alarm because 
being a creative person, I get obsessed. I start something and then like the sun rises, the sun sets, and I'm still glued to the screen. So I think I have to set alarms on the phone to remind me, hey, oh, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Take a break, go lay down. Okay, okay. And, you know, doing, I do weights every day too because I get really intense pain in the shoulders from being on the computer a lot. So, you know, you got to do the self-care and the self-love in different ways. But, yeah, I think having that daily routine uh, to do the things you said, you know, especially being grateful for the little things. I like you're being grateful for the water. I don't think that's one I've ever been grateful for. So I'm going to remember that when I do, because I drink a lot of water, but I've never thought to be grateful for it. So, see, you learn from other people just hearing a little bit about their routine. You go, oh, and I, I got to show you this, Jay. One of my viewers, when we were working together, she said to me, oh, I've been doing about, you know, a thousand affirmations a day. And I said, how do you know you're doing a thousand affirmations a day? And she said, oh, I got this little counter. So it's a little <laughs> counter and you can literally count and you buy them on eBay for $2. And I thought, that's a good idea. For people that really want to stop being negative and they've been really negative, you know, to use a little counter. And I did, I, I often do a thousand. It takes 50 minutes. It actually doesn't take that long. Because mm. usually saying I am, you know, healthy or I am happy or I am, I mean, it's a short sentence. So you, and I think, you know, being negative is a pretty uh, common <laughs> practiced uh, habit that so many people have and um, if you want to have a better relationship if you want to have a better more meaningful job you got to crack what's going on in your head about that subject so yeah. I think also what you do with that is you bring awareness to it yeah you know what you focus on expands um, yeah, and um, it's also a really good exercise um, so I haven't got a clicker but um, I just like um, Put a line on my piece of paper whenever I look. So, for example, if I look at my phone yep. or social media, if I want to cut that out in the day or I want to change something, all I do is I start marking it down and I look and I think, wow, I looked at my phone 80 times today. <laughs> like, wow. and then tomorrow it gives me a that's an exaggeration, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's a score. So, if you think about anything, if you don't, if you're not monitoring what you're doing yeah. and you're not giving it a score, you'll never improve it. Yeah. So if you think about any sport, like if you think about any sport, what do we have? Two teams or one team in this case for you, but a score. And each one of those players, they know the score and they know they need to improve the score to get to where they want to be, which, to win, which is to win. Yeah. So... When you do this, you give yourself a score. Like I've got a score of, uh, let, I just give an example of uh, 40, 41, 42 meditations, right? It's a score for me. And every time I'm trying to beat it, yeah. it's the same if you're working on your health, if you go to the gym, if you're not monitoring how you're progressing, you know, um, what's the, the gym app? I can't remember, the fit, fitness one. Okay, the fitness pal, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, when you monitor your progress, if you're not putting the stuff in there, you don't know how to measure that. Yeah. You don't know how to measure your success and you can't improve. And so I love the thousand affirmations because, you know, if you're doing it, you're, you're progressing. And yeah. even if you get to 500 initially or yeah. uh, 100, you've got something to work yeah. on in that. And um, I love that. That's really cool. I know. And that was, you know, someone's you know, great idea. And I thought, wow, you know, and a lot of the viewers on my channel have thought those. And it does, it helps you to stay focused. And you can, when you look at the end of the day and you go, wow, I did 400 or something. Well, that's 400 more than I did yesterday when I wasn't counting them because yesterday I had no idea how many I was doing. So it does give you improved confidence that you're actually doing it. And you do see a result. You do. I remember when we were doing the um, marketing course, part of it was doing 90 videos in 90 days. And I remember thinking, okay, how am I going to do that? And I remember sitting down and planning out some subjects and doing little, little series of different things. And, 
you know, that's what got me started on YouTube was that 90 days. Cause I haven't, I mean, I don't do YouTubes every day. I go off my uh, inspiration, my intuition. Some days I'll do record three in a day and then I'll slow release them. Other days, you know, I just go, no, I'm in a bad mood. I'm grumpy. I don't, I can't be videoing because it's the wrong vibe. I need to go to bed and I need to sleep. So, you know, you kind of adjust what you're doing instead of having a rigid routine. But yeah, I think it's just pushing yourself a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. I mean, I look back at where I was in 2016 and I had lost my flat. I'd lost my health because I'd injured myself lifting furniture, working in Westfields, lifting furniture for displays for homeware stores. So I was knocked out of the game. I was like, I couldn't go back to my job and I was off for a whole year. But that whole year, I created YouTubes. So, you know, you go, okay, good luck, bad luck. It's one of those things. It was the beginning and the it was the end and the beginning of something. And I so much love this more. You know, I will always <laughs> love interior design for shops and houses. Still love that. But, you know, moving furniture, no, no thanks. It, I had to let go of you have to work hard for money. I had to let go of that belief to let go of being in that job because I would have gone back and I probably would have injured myself again because I knew that I didn't want to do it anymore. So, you know, you look and you go, oh, I'm so glad I made that mental shift so that I could now have more meaningful work. And, you know, for me talking about, you know, all the people that I've learned from Neville Goddard and Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and, you know, the people we learned from, from the marketing course that you and I met at, there was such good information there and everything takes you up another level and you then are more who you need to be, who you want to be and, and your boy getting out of bed is so much better and no alarm clock. I mean, I rarely get up with an alarm. I schedule most people after 10 a.m. if I can. And, 10 a.m.? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing all morning? I go to bed. I just lay in bed and do my affirmations for an hour. I don't like getting up before 9.30, 10. I'm just a night owl. I don't mind working later in the evening, but I really, I can't put two sentences together before 9.30. I'm not coherent. So you got to work with, with which end of the day you function better at. So you got so, to wait your strengths. I want to hear about your um, because we've talked about going into different work. Can you share with the viewers what you actually do now and how you help people with what you've learned? Yeah. So um, primarily, what I do now is I. Um, coach and train people on Facebook advertising for that to help them grow their e-commerce stores. Yeah. So one of the things I found is um, that I'm a people person, and I, uh, you know, if I'm not working with people and I'm not giving to people and not adding value to people's lives and making a difference then I go into this, I slump into this like depression <laughs> of like, and I get like this um, like build up of tension that I just need to give. And yeah. I find myself always wanted to deliver. So I also run a, a YouTube channel, which uh, Anya uh, mentioned briefly, like, which is how she learned some of the things she learned about video. And um, on my channel, I share a lot of valuable uh, trainings, tools, and resources around how to um, turn um, losing uh, Facebook ad campaigns into winning Facebook ad campaigns. And I also talk about how to actually grow and improve those particular uh, campaigns as well. But um, one of the things I love is the... You know, I, I've had an e-commerce business. I, I didn't get into the whole story. I had an e-commerce business. I've done YouTube marketing. I've done Facebook marketing. And one people, people always just say to me, uh, hey, you're the video guy. <laughs> you know, Jay Williams, the video guy, they used to say to me. And it wasn't I was the video guy or I was amazing at video. I just really enjoyed being on video and sharing some of uh, my value with people. Because I know that 
uh, people really struggle and uh, you'll know as well that you know when you start to get into video you start to look to improve and you start getting better at speaking on video you start looking at how you can add a little bit of music here and maybe a little trailer here or you know do these little things and so I just started sharing all of this stuff and all of a sudden I was like oh I'm a video guy like maybe I'm a video marketer um, yeah YouTube market YouTube SEO and I really didn't know where my skill set um, how it fitted in with my channel. So I just started sharing stuff and just getting all of this stuff out of my head and just like get it on my YouTube channel. And obviously it proved with yourself that it helped a lot of people and I loved that. And um, so now I've got to a point where I've discovered that training is what fills me up. Uh, working with people, helping people, serving people, in particularly coaches as well. I work with some coaches on the side because I know that their work is really making a difference. I like working with e-commerce brands that are actually have a purpose behind them. Uh, there's a really good brand, which I'd love to work with, by the way, so if they ever watch this, maybe they'll come and speak to me. Uh, they're called uh, Give Me Tap. And uh, Give Me Tap is a fantastic online store and they sell a water bottle, uh, just a water bottle like any one. It's plastic free. I love that, by the way. I'm all about the oceans. I'm a scuba diver. Um, and this water bottle is £12. Now, there's thousands of other water bottles just like it all over the internet that you could easily buy for cheaper. But the difference is when you buy this water bottle and you spend £12, Someone in Africa gets water for five years. And I love that. And the reason I love that is because imagine being someone who's the coach and you help a particular brand like that. You're not just getting them sales and making them money. You're yep. making a real difference in the world. And that's why I love brands like that. And that's why uh, some of the e-commerce brands I'm looking to work with is in that area because they are making a difference. Yeah. Um, same as I said with coaches. That's why I like working with coaches yeah. because it's amazing work. You know what you do here on the channel, what you do with people all every day, incredible work. And I love that because it brings fulfillment and happiness into people's lives and it allows the way I always say it, it allows the caterpillar to become the butterfly. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know what? If you can give someone that gift, it's such yeah. an incredible thing. And I love that. So, yeah, yeah that's what I do. <laughs> well, I have to say a big thank you to you because I had no idea what I was doing at all. <clears throat> and I would just follow bits and pieces. And what I loved about your, your YouTubes were they were very simple English. It wasn't techie language. You speak in very basic, everybody can understand English. Because I find I was following a few other techie guys and I'd be sitting there, stop and start, what's he talking about? What's he talking about? <laughs> I know. Because it was too complicated for the average person. So that's why I kept going back to you is it was very simple. And I know there are quite a few people on this channel that do want to start something of their own. And partly why I wanted to get you on was because you're a great resource. You're, you explain things simply. And for people that want to start a YouTube channel, you're a great place to start. And we will put your you know, uh, details down below for all the different things you do, plus your own YouTube channel with the specific uh, topics, YouTubes that you do to help people. So yeah, so yeah, I, I've never got the chance to say thank you to you, but you have no idea how much of a zero out of 10 techie I was. And my YouTube channel is, I know it still needs work, but it's at least 50% okay, I think, because of the help that you've given me. <laughs> so I think, you know what? You're welcome. You're welcome. I love, uh, I was saying to you just before we jumped on this call, like it literally brings tears to my eyes. Like, how <laughs> I've made a difference in that way. And I'm sure um, a lot of your viewers will be grateful for you just putting yourself out there as yeah. well. And I love that. And yeah. there's a big lesson in this, a really yeah. big lesson for anybody who's watching, who's considering whether it be starting a YouTube channel, starting a business, um, leaving a job, making a change in your life. It's just to get going. Um, it really is. Um, 
we are as human beings very um, determined uh, and we always figure things out and um, if you think about your life right now um, whether you quit a job whether you started a business whether you got in a relationship and it ended badly mm. are you still here yeah did you figure it out <laughs> you still got food on the table you still got a roof over your head like you know if you still got money coming in to do the things probably you figured it out and so what i always say is uh say yes to everything and then get creative in a solution and uh, you know yeah. your channel is a classic example of that it's not perfect it's not perfect and it doesn't need to be because there's no such thing as perfect you'll be striving for that forever long and there's nothing wrong with being committed to learning and improving but just get going just say yes yeah. and uh, just move forward uh, because your brain is so good at just figuring things out because it noted in the best uh, here's a good example um you know when you think to yourself i need a new car and you and you, you let's say you pick out one or two cars that you really like what happens you see them everywhere. Your, ba your brain starts tuning into yeah. those cars and go, oh, do I like that one? Oh, yeah, I've seen the red color, the blue color, the, <laughs> you know, and we yeah. just adjust. And it's, it's just uh, what you focus on expands. Exactly. And uh, when you say yes, when you just move forward, step into the fear, because that's where the biggest room for growth is, yep. you'll figure it out because you always do and you always have. Mm. So, yeah. There's a good lesson in that. And, and I think, Jay, it's that thing like, you know, that you can do the most random things on YouTube. You know, there's a guy that I followed. He, he doesn't even have that many videos out and he's called Lazy R Stoner. I mean, he's completely off the planet. He has some of the best information and he, I don't even think he's done a YouTube for three years. But the amount <laughs> of information I got from that guy and he wasn't even fully present doing these YouTubes. He was totally, you know, stoned. He was stoned. But wow, he was just a genius at information. And I got so much out of what he said. And, you know, that guy will never know that he's helped me. You know, you, I was lucky because I could contact you and I could say, hey, come on and do this. And then, you know, we'll have a chat. But some people help you and they will never know what they've given you. They will never know. And that's the thing you can do. That's what I was coming back to. You can do anything that you're passionate about. You know, it could be catching butterflies. It could be, you know, fishing salmon. I mean, it really doesn't matter if you're passionate about it, you start and you give that passion through your videos. You connect with people that are like-minded that are interested in the same subject. And that's the great thing about the internet. You all, you create little groups of people that like what you like. And, you know, I mean, I remember thinking when I was reading Neville Goddard years ago, who the heck would want to talk about this, you know? And then when YouTube started, I thought, oh my goodness, wouldn't it be amazing if people could talk about Neville in groups? Anyway, that wasn't happening then, but it's happening now. And I mean, I talk about Neville Goddard on my channel a lot and people... A lot of people read Neville and a lot of people like him and a lot of people like using his teachings to apply to how to manifest meaningful work or a relationship or, and one of the big subjects on my channel is how to manifest a specific person. Just like Neville manifested his specific wife, a lot of people come to the channel because there's an ex or someone they haven't been with before, they've got a specific person in mind and they want to know, can you actually manifest a specific person? So. You know, yes is the answer. You can because Neville did it. I've done it. You know, I'm not sure whether you had a specific person in mind when you met your girlfriend, but you know, it, there's there really is such a big scope for manifesting what you want. And a lot of people say in law of attraction circles, no, you can't manifest a specific person. You just have to ask for the divine selection or you have to ask for the best person for me and you've got to be open-handed. Well, if that's what you believe, that's what's going to be your experience. For me, you know, I wanted a specific person. You know, he happened to be in another country. That's why I go to London. And I had to work out how am I going to live half in Sydney, half in London because my mum's here, he's over there. How do I, you know, and I've, I did what you did. I imagined it, I scripted it, I affirmed it. And lo and behold, for the last two years, I travel four times a year and I can still be with 
both lots of people and see my family in the south of France because I imagined an isosceles triangle with Sydney, London, south of France on it. I saw it in my head and I saw a little plane, you know, I drew a little cartoon plane and I'd move it around and, you know, it worked, it worked. <laughs> So, you know, it just depends on how, you know, being visual helps, I think. Being a little bit kooky in your weirdness of how you manifest things, it's got to be fun. So, you know, you apply and you try and you see what happens. And, uh, you know, the f I have never felt as free as I do and I've never felt probably as happy as I do because... There is nothing in my life that I don't enjoy. I've weeded out all the unenjoyable things one at a time. And now from getting up late, first thing, doing affirmations in bed for an hour, first thing that's enjoyable because I don't have to bound out of bed and go and work for someone. And then the day sort of unfolds. But yeah, slowly eliminating things I didn't like to do, uh, people I didn't want to be around, environments I didn't enjoy being in you slowly weed out and then your life is every day it's just much easier to have a good day because everything is like oh yeah I get to go and do that now or oh yeah I get to go and interview that person today or oh I get to read that little bit of that book I haven't finished or like every day it's like sometimes I think oh my god I don't want to go to bed you know and I often smash myself with headaches because I push myself too far because there's too many enjoyable things and I don't know when to stop so, yeah. you know, that's... Life is an adventure. Huh? Life is an adventure. That's how Richard Branson describes it. It is. It is. Well, it's one, one, one. We've, uh, I mean, we haven't been talking for that long because we talked for about 20 minutes before, but I thought, isn't that interesting? Because a lot of people are into numbers and they like that one, one, one thing. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Have you got anything else you want to say that... Anything that you come to mind and you think, oh, I'll share that a bit later. Is there anything that popped into your head about people that want to have the freedom that you have, people that want to have a good relationship? Is there anything that you think is kind of the foundation to these things? So one of the biggest things I've discovered is how important your environment is. Um, I 100% I hundred, hundred believe you're a product of your environment. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'd rather be alone than with toxic people that mm. don't pull me towards my dreams and push me towards my dreams. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you touched on it briefly there. I, I've pushed a lot of people out of my life that I, I haven't pushed them out. I've just spent a far less time with them. Um, I've spent less time with these people in my life because they don't, take me to where I want to go and that's okay yeah. there's nothing wrong with that you know I felt guilty for a long period of time because I was trying to step out and then people would be messaging me saying hey we can do this and I'd be like no good uh, but honestly if you want to know what your future looks like look at who you spend the most time with and it's so so true someone once said to me if you're the most intelligent person in the room you're in the wrong room yeah if you want to be a coach um, and you're not a coach right now go and hang around with coaches mm. you know because being around them they're what you wear off on them you can ask them questions hey what course did you do what do you recommend I do and guess yep. what you'll start enrolling on those courses and before you know it you're a coach yeah um, uh, yeah so the best thing I can share is like be a product of your environment um, surround yourself with people who pull you and push you towards achieving your dreams, not people who are going to say, no, you can't do that. Oh, no, you shouldn't do that. Um, oh, yeah, I, you know, and they'll just drag you back um, mm -hmm. because you'll go through life and you'll spend your whole life wishing that you'd really done something good and meaningful and purposeful life mm -hmm. with your life. Um, but instead you chose to uh, succumb to other people's negativity, worry about what other people thought about you instead yes. of stepping into your greatness, stepping into your gift mm. and fulfilling a, a lifelong purpose, a life that makes a difference in the world, a life where 
when you leave this planet, you leave it a better place than when you actually arrive. Yeah, yeah. Good final words, Mr. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, it's been oh, look joy to talk with you. It got it went so quick. It feels like we've been talking for like fifteen minutes. <laughs> it's you just know when your conversation's good and the hour goes whoosh like that, you know. Yeah, if you can, um, if you know you're having conversations like this and it just goes like that, you know you're surrounding yourself with the right people. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, exactly right. Well, thank you so much. I will be putting all of Jay's info down below in the description and you can contact him directly and uh, that's another interview done with another fabulous person. So thank you, Jay, for joining us. Do you want to say goodbye to the people? Uh, thank you for your, thank you for having me first of all and um, yeah feel free to reach out to me um, you can subscribe to my channel uh, I do regularly release uh, brand new training videos on there you can um, follow me on my Instagram um, you find me on there and like we said we'll put all the links in the description uh, box below we will okay everybody bye and Jay stay on and you and I'll have a little powwow to say goodbye on our own. Bye everyone. Yeah.